Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the angle bisector theorem. So let's get started with the following do now that is going to lead us to this famous angle bisector theorem. Triangle ABC has integer side lengths. Segment BD is an angle bisector. AD is equal to 3 and DC is equal to 8. What is the smallest possible perimeter of this triangle? This problem was taken from the 2010 AMC 10A number 16. AMC stands for American Math Competition. But anyways, how do we solve this problem? So let's draw the triangle first. So let's say here we have triangle ABC. We also know that segment BD is the angle bisector. So what can we conclude here? Well, here we know that the measure of angle ABD must be equal to the measure of angle DBC as shown in the diagram. And that is simply because of the definition of angle bisector. We also know that segment AD has a length of 3 and segment CD or DC has a length of 8. So how do we find the perimeter here? At this point, if you want to, you can pause the video and try this out. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, there is a theorem that we need. It's called the angle bisector theorem. So let me introduce this theorem first. Okay, so here's the angle bisector theorem. If segment BD bisects angle ABC in triangle ABC, then AB over AD must be equal to BC over DC. And this proportion must always be true. And again, this theorem only works if we're dealing with an angle bisector. Why does this theorem always work? Let's go over the proof now. So if we look at this theorem, we have a proportion. Usually when we deal with proportions, or usually if we have a proportion, that means that we somehow have similar triangles here. However, we don't have anything similar at this point. We cannot say that triangle ABD is similar to triangle CBD or in any of that order. So what we need to do here is construct additional segments such that we end up with similar triangles and then we can somehow make a proportion. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is draw a line parallel to segment AB through point C. Okay, so now we have these two lines parallel. So if we call that line that we just drew uh, line M, then now we know that segment AB must be parallel to line M. Okay, so what else can we do at this point? Okay, so the next thing is to extend segment BD such that it becomes a ray, okay? So extend ray BD to intersect line M at that point X as shown in the diagram. Okay, so what can we see at this point? Can we see any triangles that could be similar? Well, maybe we can prove that triangle ABD must be similar to triangle CXD. And that can be done, right? Well, here we can say that angle ABD is congruent to angle CXD because if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Then we can say that angle ADB is congruent to angle CDX because vertical angles are congruent. And then we know that triangle ABD must be similar to triangle CXD because of the AA similarity postulate. Now that we have proven these two triangles similar, we can now develop a proportion. So we can say that AB over CX is equal to AD over DC because the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Notice that we're very close to proving this theorem except the fact that here we have CX instead of BC. 
So what do we know about BC and CX? If we can prove them equal in measure, then we're basically done because we can simply substitute. Well, are those two equal in measure? Well, if we look at triangle BCX, what kind of triangle is that? Well, we know that uh, angle CBD is congruent to angle CXD. So again, what does this tell us? The fact that those base angles are congruent. Well, we know that triangle BCX is isosceles with BC equal to CX. So basically, these two legs here, so let me denote them in the diagram, they must be congruent because they're opposite those two congruent angles. So that means that we can now write that AB over BC instead of CX, that must be equal to AD over DC by substitution. And all we need to do now is rearrange this proportion to fit what we have, what we want to prove. So after we rearrange the proportion, we can now write that AB over AD is equal to BC over DC. And obviously this can be obtained by cross multiplying and then dividing on both sides. So that can be easily done. But anyways, we have proven this theorem that it always works. So how do we apply the angle bisector theorem to solve this problem that we previously had in the do now? Well, we can simply set up a proportion. Well, according to the angle bisector theorem, we know that segment BD bisects angle ABC. So we can now write the proportion that AB over AD equals to BC over DC. And we can actually substitute with those numbers three and eight. So therefore we can write that AB over three equals to BC over eight. Now, another important factor is the fact that we have integer side lengths over here. Okay, so let me underline that. So it's very important to know that we have integer side lengths. Uh, so another thing is that we want to find the perimeter, the smallest possible perimeter. But we also know that um, according to the triangle inequality theorem, the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the third side, okay? So how do we use this knowledge in finding the perimeter then? Or more precisely, how do we find the length of segment AB and BC? Well, let's think about this. If these are integer lengths, right? Then the ratio must be what? Specifically, what are the ratios or what type of number must be the ratio of uh, the proportion here of AB over three? and BC over eight. Well, we know they're equal, right? But the ratio must also be an integer. And again, why the ratios of this proportion integers? Because we have integer side lengths, okay? Okay, so what's the most basic integer we can think of that makes this proportion true? Well, we can try a ratio of one. And in that case, if the ratio in this proportion is one, then what is AB and BC? Well, if AB is equal to three and B is equal to eight, then we simply have three over three and eight over eight, which means that this side here would be three and this side would be eight. So the question is, would this work? We could find the perimeter, but let's think about this. Is this even possible? Can we make a triangle with those sides? Well, according to the triangle inequality theorem, AB plus BC must be greater than AC, which means that if we substitute, we end up with three plus eight is greater than 11, or simply that 11 is greater than 11. And we know that is simply not true. Okay, so now we know that this does not work. So what else could we do at this point? Well, we can try a ratio of two. We know that the ratio has to be an integer. So let's try the next integer after one. So if the ratio has to be two, then the question is, what are AB and BC respectively? Well, in this case, we have to ask ourselves, what value of AB and BC will give us a ratio of two? 
Well, the answer is simply if AB is equal to 6 and BC is equal to 16. In that case, the proportion would be 6 over 3 equals to 16 over 8. Again, does this work? Is it possible to have a triangle with those side lengths? Again, we can check against the triangle inequality theorem here. If we substitute, we have 6 plus 16 is greater than 11, which means that 22 is greater than 11. And we all know that that must be true. So now we found the side length of the triangle for this particular problem. And all we need to do is to add them all up to find the perimeter. So if we add up all the side length of 6, 16, and 11, we obtain a perimeter of 33. And that is the answer for this do now. Notice that we were able to solve it using the angle bisector theorem that we have learned in today's lesson. But anyways, uh, that's basically it for today's lesson. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.